studying the magnetic properties that allowed frogs to levitate. Why many scientists like to lick rocks, inventing what's called the Stanford toilet. It can use the Bristol stool form scale to measure your poo. Maybe eventually this will become the new Apple Watch. Who knows? Welcome back to another episode of the Crossover Connections with Jack Wayne podcast. My name is Jack. You think the area that you're working on is very trivial and it will never amount to a Nobel Prize or and never amount to broader recognition. Arguably the most quote unquote trivial area of science is recognized every year in something called the Ig Nobel Prizes, which brings me to our recurring segment, Whose Job Is It Anyway?, which talks about different headlines in employability that we can learn from science and technology. The Ig Nobel Prizes is a parallel set of prizes to the Nobel Prizes. I don't believe there is anywhere near as much recognition or prestige, and it's for achievements that first make people laugh, then makes them think. If your discoveries fall into this category and you can think of a way that maybe makes your discovery relatable and laughable to people in the general public and excites them where they're talking about the ingenuity or some unique angle that has the chance to win an Ig Nobel Prize. A couple of ones that really struck me from the 2023 winners, the prize for chemistry and geology goes to Jan Zalesvitz for explaining why many scientists like to lick rocks. Picking up a rock, licking the surface and putting the rock to their hand, to their eye and the shock, the thrill of minor discovery is still fresh because the little blotches they felt on their tongue allows many old school geologists to be able to identify rocks by licking it and feeling the texture of it against their tongue. Ig Nobel Prize in 2023 for public health. Sun Min Park from South Korea and the USA for inventing what's called the Stanford Toilet, a device that uses a variety of technologies to monitor and analyze what you are pooping out. And this schematic is from their paper, which by the way, is in a very prestigious journal, the Nature Biomedical Engineering Journal. It shows you the schematic of this toilet system where you fit this toilet seat over your existing toilet and it can do all sorts of measurements, urine analysis, uroflow cytometry. It can use the Bristol stool form scale to measure your poo in terms of how dehydrated it is, how fluffy or ragged the edges are. If it's big, long, snake-like pieces, the Bristol stool form scale is not the University of Bristol's proudest accomplishments, I would guess, but it is a way for us to talk about poop in a very standardized way and physicians still use the Bristol stool form scale and it can sense your pressure. And unfortunately, there's the diagram if you're watching the video version of the podcast that shows what's called an anal print scan as well as a fingerprint scan. And for this toilet seat that can measure all sorts of excrement and give you biometric analysis, maybe eventually this will become the new Apple Watch. Who knows? Should you aspire for an Ig Nobel Prize? Will that suffice? Well, I would argue many of these prizes have the ability to cut across the news media and cut across your casual conversations more readily than understanding what an attosecond is or understanding the implications of a quantum dot or mRNA vaccines. And again, your work doesn't have to win an Ig Nobel Prize for you to try to make that connection with people. See if you can communicate something interesting, something quirky about the research you're doing, something that hits the news media. This is a good exercise for you to try. And even if you're not a scientist, what you're doing in any kind of job. If you can find an element of it that is relatable to other people, even if you think is really boring, you need to find a way, whether it's in a job interview, whether it's in your casual conversations, in your Uber or Lyft, you need to find a way of making what you do in your work sound interesting and exciting. And the Ig Nobel Prizes do a really good job of spotlighting science that is very specific, yet has these kind of unintended consequences of making you laugh and then make you think. There is one single individual in the history of all of these prizes, who has won both an Ig Nobel and a Nobel Prize. And that honor goes to the scientist, Andre Game, who is a Nobel Prize winning condensed matter physicist. He first won Ig Nobel Prize for studying the magnetic properties that allowed frogs to levitate. That was in the early 2000s. And in 2010, he won the Nobel Prize in physics for extrapolating that kind of discovery, understanding magnetism, and levitation towards the magnetic properties 
of graphene. So in this case, he was able to use the momentum from recognizing his work through the Ig Nobel Prizes. I don't know if he intentionally designed to work on frogs as a bit of a publicity thing. If so, kudos to him. That's very strategic, very smart. But you have to find a way for your research to cut through, right? So that is a headline grab. There is something headline grabbing in any of the work that any of us does. We just have to find that bit. And then over time, he built that momentum, I'm sure it led to other funding that led to the snowball effect to the point where in 2010, he won the Nobel Prize in physics. The Ig Nobel Prize did translate late into a Nobel Prize, every experiment counts. So that was a run through of the 2023 Nobel Prizes as well as the 2023 Ig Nobel Prizes. Hopefully one thing in here related to something that you're doing your current work and this is the core for all of you early mid-career more senior scientists to keep finding new ways of talking about your work in different contexts in different media. I'm Jack, hope to connect with you again in the next episode.